The first week of Advent represents the hope that Jesus Christ brings into the world. And the second week of Advent leading to Christmas is that he is the Prince of Peace, that he brings peace to souls that are burdened with this world's care. And the third week is that he brings joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. God has joy for all of those who place their trust in him. And this morning, we talked about the love of God, which sews all of the other three together. Because God, in his love for this world and love for mankind, came in humble circumstances to be born as a baby. Not just to be a baby in this world, but to grow and to show us what God was like with skin on. And also to die for the sins of the world. The Bible calls Jesus the Passover lamb, God's Passover lamb. And tonight we celebrate Christmas Eve, the time where we reflect on all of these four things that Christ has brought into the world. And I'm going to ask my son Jordan if you'd come forward and read tonight's Advent scripture. Uh, as we get to light the fifth candle of Advent tonight, we read from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Christmas is a season where we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. He was born some 2,000 years ago. And this evening, I'd like everyone that's here tonight to ponder, to ponder the true meaning of Christmas. According to the Bible, Jesus was born on that first Christmas morning, and he lived an extraordinary life. The scriptures tell us that the world is lost in sin and that God loved people so much that he came to earth and veiled himself in flesh to become the son of man and also the son of God. A perfect man who displayed God for us in practical ways. And when we look at the life and teachings of Jesus, 
we are seeing the revelation of God in all of his glory. Jesus radiated the glory of God in the way that he lived, in the way that he taught, in the way that he treated other people. To look at the life of Jesus, in fact, is to see the very character of the everlasting God. If you want to know what God's like, read the Gospels in the Bible, the first four books of the New Testament. These writings display a snapshot of the life of Jesus and show us who he is. In Jesus, we see someone that loves people and that cares for the needs of everyone, from little children to people in their 90s and above. God cares for each one. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've come from, the mistakes that you've made in life. Everybody in this world needs a Savior. Everyone needs the mercy and forgiveness of God and a new start. In the year 90 AD, there was a prominent historian by the name of Flavius Josephus. This man worked for the Roman emperor of the day, and he was tasked with recording the history of the Jews. He was not a Christian man, but I will read for you a quote that he wrote in his history book concerning Jesus Christ. And this is what he says. Now there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man. For he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was Christ, and when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at first did not forsake him, for he appeared to them alive again on the third day, as the divine prophets had foretold these and 10,000 other wonderful things concerning him. And the tribe of Christians, so named from him, are not extinct unto this day. This was written back at the beginning in the first century. Many people that are not connected with the church and are unfamiliar with the core teachings of Christianity Think of the true Christmas story as kind of like an exaggerated myth. On the same level maybe as you'd have the stories of Santa Claus, which was taken and created by imaginative minds and turned into a fairy tale legend. So even though Jesus has been recognized in history by credible historians like Flavius Josephus, some folks today are skeptical about Jesus and his place in history. Skeptics of the story of Jesus would suggest that there was no virgin birth. There were no angels calling to shepherds to go and see the baby Jesus. There were no magi from the east following the star to the place where Jesus was born. There was not even a true story to tell. To the skeptic, disciples of Christ fabricated the whole thing created a nice Santa Claus kind of myth. Many people who do not believe, do not understand the significance of the original Christmas story and why Jesus was needed so much in this world. And sadly to them, the story is foolishness. As such, the traditional Christmas story has often been replaced by the myth of Santa and elves and such. A story to be told to children on a nice day of the year to gather with family and celebrate. But the Christmas story is not just for children, although it is. It's for children and for everybody that lives, even the oldest among us. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 18-25, the Apostle Paul, one of the leaders of the early Christian church, wrote this. He said, 
For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was being preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews, and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, the power and wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. So Jesus, Jesus Christ was born into the world that first Christmas morning, not only to live that extraordinary life, but he was also born to die an extraordinary death. We sing this carol, veiled in flesh, veiled in flesh. God was veiled in flesh. He came to give himself as a gift to humankind, regardless of people, regardless of their ethnicity, regardless of their background, regardless of their language, regardless of any circumstance. He came to die for all of mankind and to pay from their sins, and he rose from the dead to overcome death and the grave. God one day will gather all who believe in him into his eternal kingdom. Jesus did what he did, and he came into this world so that sinful humanity could be brought back together and be at one with their creator. This is the Christmas story. The Christmas story, my friends, is actually a love story, a love story of a creator who wanted more than a robotic relationship with his creation. He wanted a deep and meaningful relationship with people. He reached down from heaven to display his love by offering himself as a bridge and offering humanity himself. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Why would God choose to do this in the way that he did it? The truth of the matter is that the plan of salvation for all of mankind is actually a very easy plan to understand. And this sometimes frustrates the intelligence of the intelligent. Why does it have to be such a simple message? Well, it has to be a simple message so that even the simplest of people, even the smallest of children, can come to an understanding of the love of God for them and their need for a savior. That is why. So, I don't wax philosophical with you tonight. I preach Jesus Christ, the living God, born in flesh, manifest to you, to me, so that he died, so that we don't have to face the penalty of sin. That's the beautiful story of Christmas. Some people think, I'm not good enough to come to God. I'm not good enough, but I'm telling you right now, nobody is good enough to come to God on their own. But the Bible says that God's grace was so great that it reached past our own inability to be good enough. And he offers mercy, grace, and sonship and daughtership to him without having to earn it. 
the salvation that he offers comes by grace through faith. It's not of ourselves, lest any one of us should boast and say we deserved it. The true story of Christmas demonstrates the true nature of God, that God, rich in mercy, had compassion upon all that he had made, so much that he reached down to save us from eternal death, to give us eternal life, and make his home within us through the Holy Spirit. And that is the game changer. See, God doesn't save us just to leave us alone, to wander through the darkness of this world alone. He saves us so that our sins can be taken out of the way, so that he can come, and that the Spirit of the living God can make his residence within you. And this is what changes a person. You'll never be good enough to earn a place with God. But Jesus has done a work for you so that you can be close to God. All you need to do is believe. Admit that you're a sinner. Turn your back on the things that are sinful and wrong and turn to him and say, Lord, I will follow you. I will give my heart to you. And when you do this, the Holy Spirit of God will come and make his home within you. And this is the deposit guaranteeing of what is to come. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should have not perish but have everlasting life. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Friends, this is very good news for Christmas. There's coming a day when the brokenness of this world is going to be set aside. In Revelation 21, and I'll end with this, verses 3 to 5, the Lord prophesies of a day to come. And this is what it says. And I heard a loud voice from the throne crying, or saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. So tonight, if you have never asked Jesus Christ, to be your Savior. The Lord invites you to lay down your pride and ask Him to forgive you, to cleanse you from your sins and make His home in you. And if you do that tonight and you believe, the Lord will give you the best Christmas present ever. And if you're a believer here tonight, may you go home and celebrate this Christmas Eve of 2023 with your family and friends, whoever you're celebrating it with. And may your heart be filled with the gladness of the salvation that has come through Jesus. Amen. Let us bow in prayer. Jesus, thank you for Christmas Eve. Thank you for all that you are and all that you have done for us. God, I pray that your grace and your peace would rest upon these people. Lord, for those hearts that are hungry and are needing a touch from you, I pray tonight that they would receive that touch from you and that new life would start in them. And for those, God, who just need encouragement this evening, I pray that you would encourage them and strengthen them. We praise you and we thank you for this Christmas Eve and for the gift that was freely given to us for our redemption. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen.